going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily, and in this video, we are checking out the brand new Samsung Galaxy A23 5G. So I'm gonna fill you in on everything you need to know about this A23 5G. But first things first, let's just quickly unbox this thing so I can show you what does and does not come inside the box. Slicing on into it here and sliding off the sleeve, the first thing we get is what I guess you would call the packet of accessories. But inside you'll find just a stack of paperwork and a single USB-C cable, and that's it. That's that's the extent of the included stuff. No wall plug, no earbuds, no nothing. Beneath that stuff is the phone itself, which we'll take a closer look at in a second. And I suppose there is one more thing at the bottom of the box, a SIM ejector tool, if you want to call that an included accessory. So with all that stuff out of the way, here is the A23 5G itself. Obviously, it looks very similar to many of Samsung's other A-series phones from 2022. Physically, the A23 5G comes in at a standard issue 6.6 .6 inches. That's the screen size corner to corner, and I feel like every Samsung phone this year has been between 6.5 and 6.7 inches. You do get a teardrop notch for the selfie camera up top, fairly noticeable side bezels, and a large bottom chin to say the least. This phone is pushing about an 82% screen to body ratio, and in the hand, it's certainly feels big with the black borders all around. Like I said though, if you've used literally any Samsung phone from the last year or so, you know what you're getting here size-wise. Around back, this A23 is finished in Samsung's well-known matte plastic. It's the exact same fit and feel from the other higher-end A-series phones this year, like I mentioned, but no IP rating, no wireless charging, all of that indicates that this is still a budget build. And taking a quick look around, on the left side, this phone does have dual SIM and SD card support, which is great to see, especially since my A23 only has 64 gigs of built-in storage. On the right side, familiar volume buttons placed just above the combination power button and fingerprint sensor. This to me looks and feels just like every other sensor on the other A-series phones from both this year and years past. At the bottom, a single speaker alongside the USB-C port for charging and a headphone jack, which is awesome to still have on this phone. So one of the first things that sets this 5G A23 apart from the 4G model is the display. And to be honest, this is one of the top reasons to consider this phone anyway. The 6.6 inch screen is a PLS LCD panel coming in at the full HD 2408 by 1080 resolution, packing in some 400 pixels per inch. Now the screen type and resolution are the same as the 4G model and I'm okay with that. The screen is plenty sharp for this size. You've got to have a 1080 resolution when you're working with something this big. And while I generally prefer OLED, this display is bright and colorful enough to get the job done. The killer feature here though is that this is a 120 hertz high refresh rate screen. The 4G A23 offers just a 90 hertz panel. With this, you're going to get that silky smooth and ultra responsive feel with all your taps and touches. And you can debate me if you want, but I consider this still to be a top tier feature, even in 20 2022. It just makes the phone feel fast and snappy. Overall, I think the screen on this A23 5G is better than average to say the least, and you at least know that if you're deciding between the 4G version of this phone and the 5G version, you are for sure getting a better display. One thing that is the same though is the speaker setup. I believe Samsung has been using just about the same single speaker setup on these lower tier A series phones for the last couple of years now, and it's fine, plenty loud for sure, but the dual speaker setup on the higher end A series devices is a nicer upgrade. The other area that separates this 5G A23 from its 4G counterpart is the internal specs, and this should be expected. Powering this phone is the Qualcomm Snapdragon 695 5G processor. The 4G model got the Snapdragon 680, alongside the Adreno 619 GPU and similar 4, 6, or 8 gig RAM options with 64 or 128 gigs of storage. Here are the Geekbench scores for those of you who like to see it, but in real world use, this phone isn't just slightly better than the 4G LTE, I would say it's a definitive step up and a great device to use in general. Yeah, these are still sort of mid-tier specs, but this is a relatively new processor, a 5G compatible processor, and compared to the more than two year old spec and based on the, at least out of the box, the phone, and whether you just use your device for average everyday stuff or more graphics heavy things like games, I think you should also expect this phone to perform well. Out of the lesser A-series phones, the ones beneath say the A33, I also think this A23 
3 5G is now one of the better bang for your buck devices when it comes to those specs. As far as the battery capacity and charging, Samsung once again shoved a good sized 5000 milliamp battery inside this phone, the same capacity as the 4G A23 and a number of other devices this year. To me, that means this phone should last more than a day on a single charge under normal use, especially if you aren't a heavy user. And when you do need to plug in, this phone does support the slightly faster 25 watt charging standard. However, you'll need to provide a compatible 25 watt wall plug yourself since Samsung doesn't anymore. So one area where Samsung usually differentiates its devices pretty well is in the camera department. But strangely enough, we seem to have gotten the exact same camera hardware on this 5G A23 as we got on the 4G A23. Around back, the quad lens setup consists of a 50 megapixel main lens, a 5 megapixel ultra wide shooter, and a pair of 2 megapixel macro and depth sensors. Up front, the selfie camera is also the same 8 megapixel lens, though there's a strange discrepancy in the aperture depending on if you have a US device or international device, though the difference is negligible. Unlike previous A20 something devices though, Samsung now offers just about every shooting mode and feature you could ask for within reason, and some things we didn't ask for, including a dedicated night mode, pro controls, and slow-mo. The ultra-wide lens to me is also a must-have on any smartphone, and from time to time it is dropped on budget devices, so I'm glad to have it here. Macro isn't particularly useful in my opinion, and unfortunately videos cap out at 1080 resolution and 30 FPS, but beyond that I think this is a fairly well-rounded camera setup for what it is. Most people will be more than happy. What you might notice though is a slight difference in real world results. Because this phone has a better, newer, more powerful processor, it should in theory give you a better result with your pictures since it can process those images better. And just with these couple of sample shots here, the results definitely look good. Honestly, over the last two or three years, camera tech has improved so rapidly on the flagship phones that it was only a matter of time before the budget devices caught back up. And I think we're definitely there. So what all is different with the A23 5G versus the 4G? Well, the build, the display, and the internal specs. And to me, that is more than enough to consider this one over the 4G. You may or may not be able to fully utilize 5G connectivity depending on where you live, but everything else definitely makes it worth it.